Hey everyone, this is Ruan. Welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a really cool way to gather recommendations for website design, SEO keywords, advertising ideas, um, and anything that is uh, you're just going to help with you generate more leads online. And the way that we're going to do this is we're not going to use any external tools to gather ideas. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a client that we're already working with to gather really solid marketing ideas, whether they're advertising terms, social creative ideas, website updates. And if you're working with a client, this is the type of thing that you're going to want to do on a weekly basis to provide these recommendations to them as this information comes in. And so the client that we're going to be demonstrating in this video is a med spa that we've been working with for quite some time now called Pure Skin. And mainly Pure Skin offers things like Botox, injectables, laser hair removal, fat reduction, anti-aging. And that's really the main category that they're in. And so whenever somebody wants to contact Pure Skin, they use a contact form. And this contact form, of course, allows the visitor to add a, a message inside of here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be mining all of the contact form submissions using AI to generate better content ideas on an ongoing basis for Pure Skin to give us really insightful ideas based on the website's actual messaging and data and not relying on some of these third party sources such as Ahrefs, Moz, etc. We may use those with the Splashdash tool, but we're, we might, we're going to first listen to the data that's coming in through this so we can get insight specific to this customer. You can do this with calls, you can do this with forms, you can do this with web chat. Any of that data that can be pulled into Splashdash or JetGPT4 is going to allow you to do this. So let's actually jump into Splashdash and write our first prompt. And as I always do, I always start with the context. And then in this case, I'm looking to create contact form submissions from recent customers to gather valuable insights to create a better web page, advertisement, and SEO content online. I always start with what is the purpose of this conversation? If you give GPT the context, your role, in this case, it's the SEO manager, and then the, ter the task, what I'm doing, you're going to get significantly better responses through your prompts. And in this case, I'm going to be using a Duda website. As you guys may know, Developmark specifically builds on the Duda platform. And so if you are a Splashdash customer, you can integrate your Duda platform directly into Splashdash. If you're not a Duda customer, you can, of course, download your contact form submissions and put them into the GPT profile. The issue we found with that and not using the API with Splashdash is that the context window is not going to allow you to do the data more effectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on the Duda API, the Splashdash, as you can see, it's now going to talk to Duda and I'm going to go ahead and give it a start. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to request that Splashdash goes ahead and request all of the contact form submissions on the website within a specific date range that mention Botox. I can do some of this pretty programmatic filtering with contextual data. And then I want to include, uh, exclude personal details. So things like name and contact information. So I want to respect the privacy of the form submissions that have come in and this date range. So when I enter this information in, what's going to happen is uh, Splashdash is going to return the different contact form submissions that have come in from the Pure Skin website. And as you may know, I want to break this up a little bit. I don't want to ask Splashdash to do this in a 30 day window. I want to break this up and start to build the contextual window. And the reason for that is because if I try to do it all at once, it's going to result in a bad um, result because of the contextual window size. So as you can see, I have different results like define my jawline, lip filler. I have things like skin tightening, lip flip, forehead, Botox appointment, TMJ Botox, Spanish. And then Splashdash is going to give us a little analysis of why people generally came to this website for Botox. And really, it has strong interest of jawline definition, wrinkle reduction, skin tightening, lip enhancement. And I can use this data to have a conversation with the customer of which of these terms we should focus on. And then, of course, continue prompting with Splashdash to go ahead and create content. Um, so now let's do it again, except this time, let's give it a different window. I'm going to give it the next seven days and I'm going to continue building my contextual window for when I am ready to create content, I'll have a significant amount of ideas to choose from. So now you can see that the contact form submissions within this time frame really aren't that different, but we see some additional keywords. We see chemical peel, we see jaw and macester. I don't know how to say that, clenching and grinding, acne scarring. So these are all terms that we can then use a tool like SEMrush directly in Splashdash 
to find us how many people are searching that and potentially target that keyword in our advertising or on our website marketing. So let's run the prompt one more time. And this time I'm gonna do it for the date range of seven days after that. Splashdash is gonna run its action and then it's gonna give me the data. So now I have probably almost a 30 day window of what people are contacting this business about when it comes to Botox. And this is going to give me an extremely insightful amount of information for me to create content, FAQ content, advertising. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So you can see a couple of different keywords. People are interested in a monthly membership. People are interested in rosacea. People are wondering if they can get Botox treatment for TMJ, which seems to be very popular on this website. So let's go to the first set of recommendations. So now that I have a lot of these different ideas and messages, I can copy this and I can start to create word clouds. This is a GPT function that is pretty native. And so if you're using Splashdash and you have this data directly in front of you, you can begin to create a word cloud, which is a really good way of showing you at a glance what keywords are being discussed here so that you can pre better prepare advertising or you can better prepare a snapshot of what people actually are looking for when it comes to this website. And then what I can do too is I can go ahead and start to do more cool things like I can go ahead and gather a list of recommended frequently asked questions that we could potentially add to the website. And that's going to allow us to update things like their frequently asked questions page, things like their existing website content. And we want to update these pages as much as possible because users find a lot of value in these frequently asked pages. And of course, you can take it a step further and give the client the opportunity to respond to that in text, or you can have GPT write it if you've created a custom GPT for them using their data. Um, so there's the word cloud, and that's kind of what that'll look like, is all of the different terms that people are really interested in. So if I were to have a conversation with this client of this small data set that you're viewing here, it's going to say people are interested, which is good. People want to know pricing. People want to know different lines that they are potentially getting the Botox for. People want an appointment. And then the smaller things that people may not want or care about is, I don't know, aging, reduce, et cetera, because these are the main terms that are being mentioned throughout all of them. So when you take this level of data back to a customer, they're going to be very impressed with the insight that you have. So let's do it, take us a step further and let's use that same data set that we had of the different contact form submissions that are coming in. And let's have Splashdash create frequently asked questions based on that data that we should add to the website. So as you can see, this is all content that we would potentially add to this page or to the page specifically with Botox because we want to make sure that we get the featured snippet. And you can schedule a time with a customer to get this written out and you can ask them these questions and this is going to make them feel and actually give them the result of a continuous ongoing SEO arrangement. So you're always updating the website, but you're not spending time on the research and development. This is something that I've done very intensively because it allows us to always keep the conversation going. It allows us to always give them recommendations and the customer can answer these pretty quickly themselves or on a call. Or if your philosophy with your business is to use AI to write the content, you can always do that as well. So now let's get a different type of data point. And this is going to be recommending blog articles that you can add to the website. So after I do this, it's going to basically go ahead and give me a couple of blog topics that we can use to put inside of their monthly content. Similar approach here, taking the defying your jawline, the lip fillers versus lip flip, the understanding the Botox pricing, how to prepare for your appointment. These are all things that their customers have said. So it's insanely critical that you have a conversation with the customer and get these written out to continue their optimization for their website. These are topics that you can't just find by just prompting ChatGPT or checking something like SEMrush. These are topics that specific clients want to know. So it's going to make their content strategy that more defined. And now let's take it a step further and get some ad headlines that we can use for social media ads. And so for these ad headlines, we're taking what a, a specific avatar has said and we're using advertising to promote to that avatar. Keep in mind, if the customer doesn't agree with these or if the customer doesn't want to focus on these services, sometimes the data is not relevant because it might be a customer that they're not looking to work with, then you wouldn't want to use something like that. But our last step here is we can go ahead and do another search that allows us to see the recommended design elements that we should add to the website. 
What an amazing way to give this to a developer or a design team to show them some of the elements that users actually want to see on the website. Mm -hmm. And you can do this on an ongoing basis. Technically, if you wanted to run this every day, you could and always have an up to date recommendations of what your client should be doing on an ongoing basis. And now that I'm kind of wrapping this up and you can, your imagination is probably working on how you can use this. I'm going to wrap this up and give our customer an analysis of what's coming through their website when referencing the data, bold the response. So if I were to send the customer an email and I wanted to say, hey, Mr. Customer, or Miss Customer, here is your last 30 days of leads. Here's the sentiment of analysis of what people are actually curious about when they visit your website. And this information is going to allow you to be better prepared for a sales conversation, for a consultation, for an account management call. And then it's going to provide you with specific recommendations that you can get on a call with a customer and get this stuff actually done. And so if you wanted to take this even a step further within Splashdash, you can start to actually take these different uh, uh, recommendations for let's say ad headlines, and you can have Gali actually create an image of what the ad would actually look like. So if you're working with a design team or if you're a designer yourself, you can start to actually visualize what these ads are gonna look like, run it by with the client so you don't spend a bunch of time designing, have them pick and then put that into production. So it's going to allow you to scale this really, really quickly if you're working with one client or if you're working with multiple clients. So if I were to have a call with the client, I would show them an ad that would look like this, and then I would go ahead and make sure that you kind of generate a few of these to get their buy-in and then go into the ad production, send it to a designer or use a tool like Canva to create it yourself. I know we covered a lot in this video, um, but I want to show you one of my favorite use cases of keeping a client engaged and finding some of these really great SEO opportunities and PPC opportunities and website opportunities by using their data. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.